Howdy, it's Kyle with a video talking about and comparing the various national motel chains. And this is primarily designed for road trippers, so I'll be looking at some of the national budget motel chains and some of the national mid-level motel chains. So this is not the video to watch if you're interested in learning about the 10,000 thread count sheets and the diamond encrusted faucets at the Ritz Carlton of the Four Seasons. But if you're interested in learning what are the best and worst motel chains for road trippers and which ones offer the best value, then this is the video for you. This is really important information for road trippers for two main reasons. The first is that you'll want to make sure you have all your rooms booked in advance. And a lot of times people think that booking a room at a motel is kind of like booking a table at a restaurant where you only have to have reservations for the fancy ones and you can just walk right into an Applebee's and grab a table. Well, it doesn't quite work that way at motels. And I've seen it on many occasions where I've been checking in with a reservation and somebody has walked in and asked if there's a room available and the person's like, no, we have no vacancy. So some of these even cheap motels can surprisingly fill up, especially the ones that are just off the interstate. You know, people have been driving all day. They're tired. They pull over and just look for the first room that's available. And again, oftentimes they're full. So make sure you do have things booked in advance. And the second reason why this is important information is because you'll probably want to stick to one motel chain for all your reservations. So if you're going to be gone five, 10 days, however many days you're going to be gone, it's just so much easier to log on to one company's website, make all the reservations there, and you don't have to deal with any kind of hassle if you have to change your itinerary at the last minute, you have to juggle this company's reservation with that one. So it can be kind of a pain, but if you stick all with one motel chain, moving things around a little bit is much easier. So have things booked in advance, stick with one motel chain, and your trip will have a lot less hassle. I'm going to be looking at three different levels of motels. The first is going to be the low-end budget motels, and these are the cheapest national chains out there. So if you're primarily interested in saving money, these are the ones you're going to be looking at. The second level is going to be the upper-level budget motels, if that makes any sense. They're still budget. They still offer no frills, but tend to be a little bit nicer and, of course, cost a little bit more. And the third level is going to be the mid-range motels. And so I'm not going to be looking at anything above that because most people on road trips aren't looking to spend 150, 200 bucks a night on a motel. So again, these are the three levels I'm going to be examining. I'll be looking at 18 different national chains in this video. And in my 20 years of road tripping, I've hit 16 of them multiple times in various parts of the country. So I'm pretty familiar with these chains as a whole and what they have to offer. And even the two I have not said that, I have a pretty good idea what they're like just based on the eyeball test, looking at what kind of neighborhoods they're located in and what they're most comparable to. So without further delay, let's get to the details of the individual chains. At the low end budget motel level, I'm looking at three major national chains. The first is Motel 6, and that's the one that of course has the most locations. They're all over the place. You can always find one. And even after 20 years of road tripping, I'm still staying at Motel 6. That says something about it. And uh, I said there are probably 50 different ones, and for the most part, they're perfectly fine. They're, you know, basic, bare bones, no frills, nothing special about it. And most of them are a little rough around the edges, but some of them are also pretty nice, surprisingly. And so a lot of them have been recently renovated, so that's nice. And, you know, a lot of them, again, are a little rough. But, you know, there are very few of them that are kind of sketchy. But there are a few sketchy Motel 6s. Don't stay at the one in East Oklahoma City. That one is super sketch. But, um... You know, the thing I like about Motel 6 is that you can just book all of them at once, and if you have to change your itinerary last minute, it's no problem. And that happens a lot when road tripping. So say you're traveling along I-40 and you're heading west, and you stop in Amarillo, eat one of those 72-ounce steaks, and you're really regretting it, and you can't get as far as Albuquerque where your reservation is. You can call the 1-800 number and say, hey, we can't make it as far as we thought. Can we change the reservation to, say, Tucumcari kind of thing? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, it's perfectly fine. No big deal. Or say the opposite, say you're making really good time, we can get farther than Albuquerque, can we change it to Gallup? Oh yeah, no problem. So I've done that many times, and there's a decent chance that will happen to you on your road trip. So that's kind of like I was saying at the beginning, it's nice to have all your reservations with one chain, because you can change them like that without really any big issue having to deal with various chains. So again, if I'm going low-end budget, and I'm going to be traveling by myself, I'm going to be going with Motel 6 most likely. The other uh, major national chains I'm looking at, one is Travel Lodge, and for the most part, the average travel lodge is perfectly fine. It's just like the average Motel 6, you know, just basic bare bones, no frills, you know, maybe a little rough around the edges, but, you know, not bad, perfectly fine. But the main difference is that there's a higher percentage of travel lodges that are going to be a little more sketchy. So most of them are fine, but there's a higher percentage that they're not going to be that good. So I usually don't do travel lodge. And if you're going to do, you know, say 10 nights on a road trip, if you're booking travel lodge, there's a pretty good chance that a couple of them are going to be a little dicey. So 
And the one major budget national chain that won't stay at it at all are the Knights Inn. And, you know, these can be pretty rough. And the average Knights Inn is perfectly fine. It's like your Motel 6 or your Travel Lodge. But there's a much higher percentage of Knights Inn that are pretty sketchy. And I use that word a lot, but it's there are some sketchy ones out there. So, you know, if you're going to book 10 nights at Knights Inn, you're going to get a couple of rough ones. So I, I tend to stay away from Knights Inn. They're not any cheaper than Motel 6 anyway. So if you're going to go... Low end budget national chain. I would stick with Motel Six. It's just the most convenient and the one I do recommend. At the upper end budget motel level, I'm looking at Super Eight, Red Roof Inn, Howard Johnson, Econo Lodge, and Days Inn. And these five are all a little bit more expensive than the low end budget level, but they're also a little bit nicer. But they are still budget. No frills, bare bones, nothing special. But you're also significantly reducing the sketch factor. You're not going to find really a sketchy one of these five. You know, some of these might be a little rough around the edges, might need a little bit of renovation, but you're not going to find them that are totally dicey with prostitutes hanging out in the parking lot kind of thing. So, you know, we haven't had any problem with these. I would say that plenty of um, Super 8s and Red Roof Inns and, you know, this whole level of, of uh, accommodation. Um, you know, Howard Johnson's are perfectly fine for the most part, but of the five in this category, they, they are more likely to be located in kind of weird areas. So, you know, the, the main clusters for, for motels are going to be right off the interstate, right downtown, or right near the airport. So a lot of times if you're staying at a, at a budget type place, it's not in one of those three areas, it can be a little dicey because, you know, you have a little more, you know, remoteness associated with it. You might have a little more unsavory activities going on in the neighborhood. So, you know, Howard Johnson's might be a, a perfectly fine place, but it might be located in kind of a ghetto area. Um, I tend to stay away from Econo Lodge and Days Inn because you're paying a little bit more for them, but they tend to be not any better than the low-end budget. And there are some perfectly fine Econo Lodge and Days Inn, but you're paying more than the low-end budget, but not really getting much more out of it. So if I'm going to go at this level, I'm usually going Super 8 or Red Roof Inn. We've had pretty good success with these two. For the most part, they're they're perfectly fine. There's, I've never seen a sketchy Super 8 or a, or a Red Roof, but they can be, you know, could use some renovation at some sometimes, but you know these are the ones we usually go with at this level. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you're paying for the average red roof end. You're paying for the average Super Eight or Howard Johnson, even though the one, that particular property you're staying at might not be any better than the Motel Six across the street. But because the average red roof is better, you're still paying a little bit more. So be a little careful with that. Um, but for the most part, you'll get pretty good value out of this level. Um, and yeah, we usually do super eight or red roof. So, you know, a decent level, but you're not going to get much more out of it than you will at a motel six or a travel lodge. At the mid-level range, I'm looking at comfort in quality in La Quinta, Hampton, Holly Inn Express, jewelry, Wingate and Microtel. And without a doubt, these are the ones where you're going to get the most value. They're almost always either recently renovated or they're new properties. And they're almost always located in decent neighborhoods. They all offer free breakfast in the morning, which is nice. So when my wife and I are road tripping, we're going to stay at a hotel on this level. She likes to get up earlier, go down and eat breakfast while I'm still sleeping. So that's really convenient. And you're pretty much guaranteed the place will be pretty nice. And of course, you're going to pay a lot more for it. And over the course of a 10 to 15 day road trip, you know, an extra 40, 50 bucks a night for a play, I can really add up. So you can easily add $500 or more to the cost of your trip. So do keep that in mind, even though any individual night isn't going to be that much more. But I've never seen any of the ones in this level even be rough around the edges. They're always at least pretty nice. So you can be pretty much assured that you're going to get a pretty good stay at these places. And even if you're going to go on a, you know, if you have a ton of money to spend, I don't recommend going any higher than this level because if you're on a road trip, you're not going to spend much time in your hotel. So any money spent on a really expensive place to me is kind of wasted. And the one thing I like about this level is that some of these are actually located right in the heart of downtown. So we go to Nashville a lot and we'll stay at the Holiday Inn Express or the Quality Inn that's right downtown. It's not very expensive. So we can go to a hockey game or go to the bars and afterward just stumble back to the hotel without having to take a cab, which is real nice. And you're not paying a whole lot more for it. So I do like this level um, of hotel. So if you're going to get the most value out of this again, but again, you're going to pay a lot more for us. So do be mindful of the fact that you're going to add several hundred dollars to your overall trip if you're going up to this level, as opposed to say the low budget level. When road tripping, we usually go with comfort in, quality in, or jewelry in. Um, comfort and quality are the same hotel conglomerate. They're pretty much the exact same. They cost the exact same and they're all over the country. So you can make all your reservations from their website. And if you have to 
you know, change your booking last minute, kind of like with the Motel 6, I was saying it's really easy to do, no problem. Um, jewelry is very nice, but uh, there aren't that many of them. So you really wouldn't be able to do a national road trip and just stay at those, but you can do a trip if you're kind of staying in the east and doing a little more regional road tripping. Um, Holiday Inn Express has kind of crept up their prices recently. They had they have kind of a strong following. They were new for a while, and then you know people really got into that value you can get from them. But because of that, they kind of took advantage of it and raised their prices a little bit. So you might pay a little bit more for Holiday Inn Express and some of these other ones, but I mean, they're all perfectly fine. And I've never stayed at a micro hotel or a Wingate. Those are both part of the, the Wyndham Hotel conglomerate, but they all look about the same in the same category. They look pretty comparable. And just, I was looking at some of the reviews online. They seem to be pretty comparable. So you're gonna get pretty good value out of anywhere in this range. So I do recommend uh, any of these places at this range. You really can't go wrong. I want to make special mention of Best Western and Ramada. And I don't think these are the best choices for road trippers because they can just be all over the place in terms of quality and price. Anywhere from kind of a cheap place, you pull up to your door and it's not much better than the Motel 6, all the way up to a fancy high-rise hotel right downtown. So if you're going to book all your rooms with one of these two chains, I mean, it's going to vary in quality and price throughout the your entire trip. So say you live somewhere where the Ramada is a nice high rise hotel downtown. You might book a room and pull up to it. It's like, wait a minute, this is just a cheap place like Motel 6 kind of thing or the exact opposite. Maybe you live somewhere where the Ramada is just that kind of cheap regular place and then you are booking a room that's actually a fancy high rise hotel. So I've never seen a sketchy Best Western or Ramada, but you know the, uh, the quality is going to be all over the place and the price all over the place. And because of that, I don't think it's the best choice for road trippers. Something else to consider is that Motel 6, Red Roof Inn, and La Quinta are the only three that allow your pet to stay for free. And that might be an important consideration for you. When we road trip, we always have our dog with us. So it's important to stay at a place that allows pets to stay for free. The other places all allow your pets to stay, but they'll either charge it as if it's another person staying there or they'll charge a cleaning fee. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I smuggled my dog into places that don't allow pets to stay for free. But he's also a little tiny lap dog that doesn't shed, so I don't feel any guilt whatsoever with smuggling in. He's he's ridden in my backpack as I took him through the lobby to sneak him by into the room. So, you know, again, that might be an important consideration for you. So, again, Motel 6, Red Roof Inn, and La Quinta are the three that will allow your pet to stay for free. Another thing to consider is that if you're trying to save money by staying in a motel out in the suburbs, but you also want to go downtown at night to go drinking and partying, and you have to take a cab or an Uber to get back to your motel, Factor in the price of that cab or an Uber into your hotel cost because if you're saying spending 60 bucks a night at the Motel 6 out in the suburbs, it might take you a $30 cab ride to get back out there. So, you know, factor that in because that $100 room right downtown might not be as expensive as you think when you factor in the transportation costs. So that's my overview, the major national motel chains and which ones might be best suited for you for a road trip. My overall recommendations are if you're going to go cheap, go with the Motel 6. If you want to spend a little bit more money, go with any of the mid-range motels, and you really can't go wrong with any of them. From a road trip perspective, I tend to stay away from Super 8 and Red Roofs and Howard Johnson's. Nothing's particularly wrong with those, but over, say, a 10-day road trip, you're going to spend $200 to $300 more by staying at those places, and you're not going to really feel like you get $200 to $300 more value out of it. So if you want to go cheap, go to Motel 6, or spend a little bit more to go with the mid-range stuff, that's the best way to do it on your road trip. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And if you're going to be road tripping, you may want to subscribe to this channel because I'm posting a lot of stuff about road tripping, some good advice and good information, as well as just some other geography stuff and some other stuff about U.S. travel. So yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out and about to go burn the clothes I was wearing when sleeping at the night's end.